Who is this? I'm a man who likes to kill pigs. More than anything, that's what all us brothers like to do is kill pigs. When you bring me evidence, rock solid evidence of conspiracy, it won't just be 36 men. I'll put the whole department behind you. Walk around, talk to people. Put your ear to the asphalt. And then point the finger? None of us truly understand. And Tom McGill raised his hand and took an oath when he was sworn in to become a police officer. He had no intention of giving up his life, but he did. Perhaps because of the nature of the service he had embraced, or because of the nature of the man he had become. And perhaps because when he risked and gave up his life for a fellow officer, he had seen the full meaning of the phrase, the line of duty. Lovely, lovely. You missed quite a show. Motor cops, long lines, of uniformed patrolmen. Chaplain, he was never braver. Color guard, well, they were very colorful. Yep. And the chief and the commissioner, they were, they were very proud of the widow. She almost let it all go when the bugle started blowing taps. Oh, you and I both know the whole thing is so obscene. You've got to admit that they get better press coverage than any other planned police activity. Oh, sure. And the brass will even get to wear their dress uniforms. Well, we sure do take care of our debt, don't we? We finally got a trace on the owner of the car McGill was checking out. A man named Hopkins. He's in Reno. And Nevada police say he didn't even know it was missing. Duty sergeant sent it up. Delivered for you at the desk. Who dropped it off? I don't know. Why? We'll find out. It's off McGill's car. Mary Charles George McGill. That was a little arrangement that he had worked out with the DMV. I've been in his car enough times to know it. You find out who dropped it off and why. Yes, Captain? Give me Sergeant McGill's home. Yes, sir. Mickey? It's Hello, Joe Kevin. Harper. That package this is sent to the captain a little while ago. How did you get it? Well, how about Mom? Oh, fine. Well, you look after you, yeah? Did she say anything? Say, Kevin, did your dad have okay. a license plate missing off his car? Okay, thanks. When? I see. I'll be getting back to you. You take care of yourself. Tom went to his car to go to work. His rear license plate was missing. That was two days ago. The day he was killed? Yeah. What did the desk have to say? Some kid just walked in with it and said it was for you. What kid? The sergeant never saw it before. Ten-year-old black kid, a little girl, said a man gave her a dollar and 
Ask her to drop it off. Yeah. There's an outside call for you, Captain. The caller won't say who he is. What does he want? He says he wants to talk to you. Well, you ask him, see what it's about. You get this over to the lab, see if they can lift any prints off it that don't belong here or to a 10-year-old kid. Yeah. He says it's about Tom McGill. Captain Covino here. Did you get the license plate, Captain Calvino? Who is this? That's what I'm going to tell you, Captain Calvino. I'm a man who likes to kill pigs more than anything. That's what all us brothers like to do, is kill pigs. Hello. Hello. I'm telling you there was just somebody waiting there to kill himself a cop. And I should have known better, Skipper. And Tom got gunned down because the action was dumb. I was dumb. Why? You did just exactly what you were supposed to do. But something told me that car was a trap. Well, how? Somebody tap you on the shoulder? Tell you so? Oh, is that what happened? No. Yeah. Well, you're not to blame. You walk around with the guilt of Tom's death on your shoulders. What do you think that's going to do to you as a cop? Next time I'll pay more attention to the rumbles. I should have told you. Well, tell me now. There was this little party I went to. You know how you hear things at parties? You know, people coming up to you when they hear you're a cop. And they say, what about those crazies going around that they're going to off themselves some pigs? Aren't you scared? So you grin and, and you don't think about it too much because there's a noise and, and there's a party. And I didn't pay it any mind, Captain. Maybe I should have mentioned it, but I didn't. And look what happened. I'm telling you, Weber, it's like they were waiting for him, like McGill and Pierce were set up. They dumped a wreck on the sidewalk and shot the first cop that came along. Hey, we got time for some more coffee. Let's go. Captain. Oh, Joe. How well do you know those two officers have just left? Ferrara and Weber. As far as I know, good men. Both of them. Weber's kind of new in the district. Very bright. Went to one of those all-black universities. Grambling, I think. What about Ferrara? Uh, very loose, very likable. Plucked the test for sergeant the last time out, but he'll make it. Why? They were talking about McGill. Like the killing was a setup. Have you heard any talk like that? Oh, when I walked into the locker room this morning, suddenly the troops stopped talking. Everybody got very quiet, whatever that means. If you hear any more talk like Ferreira's, I want to be the first to know about it. You were looking for me? Our division detectives have been busy. They found the company that manufactured the paper used to wrap the license plate. And they checked the company's customers. And I see they think they got something. What they got is ABC Package and Gift Wrapping, which is owned by a Leonard Gardner. There are a couple of latents on the plate that match Leonard Gardner's. He did five for armed robbery released a year ago. But what's interesting is his 510. When Leonard went into the slammer five years ago, he was a known associate of Gordon Mabotu and that Black December group. Mabotu. He's militant. But as far as I know, non-violent. Let's talk to Gardner. See what he's got to say about that print. I sent Evans to talk to him. I'm Detective Evans, Police Department. Are you Leonard Gardner? Yes, I am. Do you remember wrapping this plate, Mr. Gardner? Maybe one of the girls. Your prints were on it. Well, then that answers your implied question, does it not? Of course, then, that plate was in the shop. But explicitly, do I remember it? No, I do not. Try hard, Leonard. I beg your pardon. A few moments ago, you called me Mr. Gardner. And nothing I know of has happened here to put us on a first-name basis. You're right, Mr. Gardner. Now, you wanted me to think hard about that license plate. I will do that. Tell me when to stop. I'm not trying to put you on, officer. Once I was in grave trouble with the law, and having no wish to jeopardize this business I have here, I want to do exactly as you say. If I'm antagonizing you, it's 
because I don't know what to do. I don't remember that license plate. I wrap everything here from candied fruits to art objects. And I'm sure I must have wrapped that plate. But the event escapes me, and I am sorry. But if the event catches up with you, I'd appreciate a call. You may count on that, officer. Thank you. You're welcome, officer. <laughs> Maybe looking for a tail. We'll be with him in the morning when he gets up and at night when he goes to bed and he will never know of our existence. Amen. Hey, Weber. What do you think of these real bright cops who phone the department and tell us to keep an eye on their house while they're on vacation? And then they don't stop their paper and let everybody know they're out of town anyway. Did you stop your papers last vacation? <laughs> Who'd fill me in on the mess? Come on, let's go. Did you bet the game? Sure. Who'd you bet on? I bet on Kansas. I made a hundred bucks. Hey, what's the name of that place? Uh, Guana what? Uh, Guana, Guana, Guanajato. I don't know. It's in Mexico. I guess Lopez has got some family there. Hey, nice house. Yeah, that's the pride and joy of Senior Officer Lopez. Sit tight. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Town because I've been reading the reports from your division. I don't like them. I don't like them because of one word, conspiracy. I don't happen to like that word either, Frank. Then use it responsibly. Don't start throwing it around for any excuse. Two isolated killings do not make a conspiracy. There were three. There was another cop shot down by a sniper less than a month ago. Not in your division. Next to it, seven blocks away. Also a black neighborhood. Now, I checked with Captain Maroney before coming down here. No arrests. Not even a suspect. All right, all right. Three isolated killings. Did you see Maroney around here yelling conspiracy? That's huh? because Maroney doesn't have the related information that I have. Now, everything that's happened around these killings in the last couple of days was in that report, and you said you read it. Yes, I read it. Do you call that evidence? Some nut cause, mayor's your license plate? With that? No, not to court, Frank. To another policeman, yes. Now, I'm telling you in my best judgment that something's happening, and it damn well might be a conspiracy. Do we both want to wait around till more cops are killed? Okay. I'd better lay it out for you from my point of view. There are 42 divisions in this city that I've got to worry about. You've got one. I'd like to keep this city cool. The whole city. But up in one division, the captain and his troops are talking about a plot to waste cops. Any cop. First cop they see. Naturally, the troops start getting jumpy. They got to. The black citizens in that community pick up on it. They start getting jumpy, too. Remember eight years ago? Exactly what happened on both sides? Six blocks in your division went up in flames. Eight more on the south side. The fatality count? Well, hell, you know the numbers as well as I do. All right, Frank, hold it. No, no, sit down, will you? I'm not finished yet. Come on, sit down. All right, that's better. When we dug into it months later, what did we find? Conspiracy? You tell me, Steve, because you were part of the investigating team. No, no conspiracy. Some blacks erupted. And some of them, the report said, had reason. 
But for four days, while the burning, looting, shooting went on, the talk of conspiracy with the newspapers pumping, it sure helped, didn't it? I agree, but that was eight years ago. Things are different now. Read the newspapers if you don't want to read your own police reports. Some of the wilder fanatics have been pulling away from those black radical groups all over the country. They think the answer is killing cops, like those three cops that were shot down in the streets of New York, no motive, two in Detroit. And how about the other two in Oakland less than a month ago? Shot down in a helicopter by some, some sniper sitting on a rooftop. And that's what you think you've got going in your division, huh? Well, I can't absolutely prove it, but when I get the evidence and I'm working on it, I'll fill you in. Come on, Frank, I need the help of 36 more men. I... I could give you those 36 men. That's a possible. Despite the fact that policemen, extra policemen, cost money, a lot of money. Only, there are four blacks on the board now. And I'd have to tell them, as well as the other board members, that we think there's a black conspiracy on the streets to kill policemen. And I'd also have to tell them that we have no evidence. Absolutely none. Just some gossip, a phone call, and a few other notions. And... This report. Didn't somebody tell me you were going back to your wife and daughter? We tried. Didn't work out. I picked up the divorce papers a couple of months ago. I'm sorry to hear that. You changed the subject. No, I didn't, Captain. This meeting is over. I don't get the 36 men. When you bring me evidence, rock-solid evidence of conspiracy, it won't just be 36 men. I'll put the whole department behind you. Until then, you see to it, Captain, that those troops of yours don't go off half-cocked. You show them, Captain, how to play it cool. <laughs> Well, that's a uh, red wig kid. He looked like a suspect we had on the sheet. So I called him over the car and he ran into that place. That church? Well, okay. Is that the suspect? We thought so. We were wrong. Did you apologize to those people? No. What have you been doing? Showing them how hard nosed you can get? Pretty soon you're going to have a crowd on your hands. And then some nut is going to get the bright idea and put gasoline in a wine bottle and throw it. Is that what you want? No, sir. Then get back there and stop it. Now. If a couple of us would come busting into one of your church, tearing down the aisles, waving our guns, and scaring the worshippers. Just because you got on that blue suit, you think you're God. We were wrong, Pastor. We apologize. Huh. I said we're sorry. I never heard a cop say that before. We're human. We make mistakes. That's nice to know, Oliver. And it won't happen again. We're pleased to hear that. Come on, boy. Even if you are ruining my reputation as a righteous militant. Hmm? <laughs> well, I like your dress, if that's what you call it. A little Africana offend you, Stephen? Uh -uh. And you're wearing those bone earrings, too. <laughs> I couldn't remember when you used to wear those crazy mini skirts. Yeah, well, this was a semi-official function. Have to mama the man once in a while, as they say. Have to get our share of the government bread, don't we? Oh, you've changed. Yeah. I don't own and operate a crummy restaurant anymore. 
I don't take IOUs, I don't feed freeloading cops, and I don't have scrambled eggs on my shoes. <laughs> well, I liked you better the other way. I liked you better, too. A tough young cop. A beautiful young bull walking that Center Avenue beat. You haven't been like that in a lot of years, baby. Well, things change. People change. Yeah. They get married and divorced. Some of them take it hard. Do you know somebody like that? No. Not me, no. Look, I've had a long day. I gotta get home. I'll follow you. Make sure I don't get any tickets? I never interfere with an officer in the performance of his duty. Like you raided a health store. So would you tell me what organic food's supposed to do for you? <laughs> it keeps the black beautiful. Oh. Now, is that the agenda? My diet? No. There have been two police officers murdered in the past four days. Yes. I believe the killings were planned. By blacks? This division is 90% black. Chances are. Yes, blacks. Planned? You're talking about a conspiracy. That's right. By my people? No, not your people. A group. Probably black. <laughs> Forgive me if I editorialize. But you're talking about brothers gone bad, and that is a very sad thing. If what you say is true. Well, hear me out. Now, let's suppose it, it's true. A conspiracy is a very serious thing, if it exists. That's why I need your help, to see if it does. How? Walk around, talk to people. Put your ear to the asphalt. And then point the finger? Oh, come on, Frankie. I'm talking about murderers, cop killers. Slow down, okay? I know exactly what you're talking about. Frankie, nothing happens around here that sooner or later you don't hear about. Now, all I need Stephen, is Stephen, one... don't be stupid, please. There are things that go on in the ghetto. If I knew about them, I couldn't live with myself. But all right, I will indulge you. I'll consider there is a conspiracy down here to kill policemen. Would you like to settle back and listen to some polemics? About why a black man suddenly rises from his bed one morning, so sickened that killing cops is the only thing he can do to bring his life into order? No, you don't want to hear that, do you? Not now. I have damned your pig tactics many times, to the governor, the mayor, every medium that'll listen to me. And they do. But that doesn't mean policemen should die in the streets. My men are getting uptight. And sooner or later, they're going to start pushing people around. People will push back. I don't want that to happen. I want to stop it before it gets that far. That sounds logical. Frankie, I need your help. Yes, I think you do. Wallace with an S. Yeah. Youngstein. Uh, help you, Captain? I'd like to speak to the men, Sergeant. Uh, after roll call, okay? Just roughly. I don't want to count the creases. Youngstein. What's the talk about Ferrara and McGill? Well, they're pretty unearthed. Somewhere along the line, somebody called it a plot, and they picked okay, up on it. They put it together with that shooting down the 19th Division. What have you been telling? The two shootings were coincidental, no plot. Am I right? I hope so. I picked up something in the coffee room. One of the men is going around saying that if the people are really out to get the cops, it might be a good idea not to use the call boxes. They might be booby-trapped. I'd like to inspect our weapons, Sergeant. Okay, Skip. All right? Yeah, fine. All right, men, line it up for inspection. Come on! Move it! Come on, man, move it. How old is this ammo? Two months, sir. You can dismiss him in, Sergeant. I want to talk to Kilda. Yes, sir. Dismissed. 
Kill to the captain. What's legal for ammo? 200 grains, sir. What are you planning on shooting with this stuff? Rhino? Magnum ammo in your pouch. It's illegal. You know the rules. A magnum can go through three walls and drop a man sitting down to his dinner. But what are you carrying it for? You've been with the force better than three years. Working a hot division like this, no beefs, that's commendable. All of a sudden, you violated the rules. I want to know why. All right, Captain, I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm out there trying to take care of my own butt is why. And this little pea shooter I got on my side with 200 greens in it isn't going to do the job when people are out there trying to knock off policemen. That's why, Captain. You know what I said to him? To whom? To that red-haired boy who started talking to me in the pool. <laughs> But I was under the impression that you started talking to him. I certainly did not. He said he went to Everly, and I said... Something wrong, Dad? No, honey. What can be wrong when I'm with you? Thought maybe you knew those people. Used to know people, though, just like them. You mean when you and Mom were together? Come on, honey. We're going to be late for the movie. Hey, Captain. You got a minute for me, Marie? Well, sure. Aren't you the one that notified Officer Ferrara to check out Lopez's house while he was on vacation? Yes, sir, I was. Well, tell me about it. Well, I don't know what it is you want me to tell you, Captain. Uh, Officer Lopez called in and said he was going on vacation. I think I can find that call slip if you'd like. No, that's okay. And then I checked the duty roster and saw that officers Ferraro and Weber would be cruising past his house, so I asked them to check it out. Are we keeping you busy? <laughs> sure. What about yourself, Captain? Every minute. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> Joe, I want that duty clerk under surveillance. For the simple reason that she knew that Ferraro was going to be near those two houses last night. So did about 43 other people in the department. Anybody who processed those call slips or any clerk who knew which basket to look in. Under surveillance, Marie Hall. Okay? Okay. Anything new on that man who runs that place where McGill's license plate was wrapped? Leonard Gardner. According to his tale, he leads a nice, quiet life. You gonna split, Captain? Yeah, I think so. How about you? Well, I'm waiting for a call from Audrey. She's found a new fettuccine place. You wanna come along? No, thanks. Hey, what's the matter with a little Italian of food and some vino? Come on. You know what you ought to do for yourself sometime, Steve? Look, I'm gonna do you a favor. Audrey brought home a really fine-looking woman the other night from her ceramics class for coffee. And she's kinda new in town. Divorcee, no kids very bright, and wondering how to meet a good man in this town. Now, why don't I call Audrey and tell her? Tell her I said hello. And can that kid eat? 11 years old. Eats more than me and the wife together. And he don't even weigh 100 pounds. My kid doesn't eat a thing and weighs 160. 21 A12 in all units vicinity, Front Street and North Avenue. 211 at Peyton Liquor Store. 21 A12, code 3. <laughs>
For what reason? Innocence of an evening. A child runs to the store for her parents. She takes a shortcut. Two men with drawn guns come at her. She panics. She dies. This week, two police officers were shot down. We mourn them, as we mourn all dead by violence. For violence strips us all, black and white, citizen and police, of all our dignity, the right to our shared human heritage. Within your anger, somehow, I cannot tell you how, you must forgive. But in your hearts, you must never forget. Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. I'm Captain Colvino. Those officers involved in your daughter's death were under my command. I'd like to express my deep sorrow. Frankie, 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 I've got to see you. I want to talk to you. Talk to your own. All days off are canceled. All vacations are subject to review. Any questions? What's happening, Captain? What's going on? We want this division to be up to full strength. We want you to know that when you're out there on those streets, you've got the security of plenty of backup. That way, you won't get nervous and do something you ordinarily wouldn't do. That way, you can hang loose, vigilant, but loose. Is it true, Captain, there are a bunch of weirdos out there and all they want to do is total cops? It's possible. Who are they? We don't know. What's on your mind, Kilda? All right. I know I'd feel a lot better and I know a lot of the other officers would if we just knew exactly what was going on around here. Well, as soon as we have any indication, we'll let you know. Who else? That's it. Dismiss. Okay, mister, what was that all about? What do you think you were doing? Out of the car. Hey, now, look, what is this? Do you want to see my license, man? Out of that car. I'm asking you if you want to see my license, man. Out! Hey, hey, now, there's no need for no gun. Now, what the hell have I done, man? He didn't do nothing. Mr. Man, I've been standing right here watching. Put your hands in the roof of the car. For what, man? I haven't done anything. Hey, that's Don't mess him around. Out of your mind. You gotta be insane, man. I haven't done anything. Just hold it right there, Buster. Buster? Captain. Captain? Oh, no, no, wait a minute. What the hell is going on? Why am I surrounded by cops? Lambert, I want to have a word with you. Sure. What's going on? Well, I guess it just turns out to be a traffic violation. Blew a stop sign. Mm-hmm. What are you basing him for? He went inside his code for I had a chance to ask him for his license. What did you ask him for? Nothing. I asked him uh, what he thought he was doing. Is that the M.O.? No, sir. Sorry this happened, mister. You can leave now. Well, thank you. You cops are getting pretty quick with your guns. I mean, did you see what he did to me? He had me hanging over the car getting his gun out. Nobody had his gun out. You had your gun out and I got proof. All right, forget it. It's over now. You can go. Forget it. Cops. And I hope you get what's coming to you. Whatever goes around, comes around, you dig? Okay, everybody, it's over now. Sorry it happened. You can go home now. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. 
Lambert. How many beefs do you have in your file? None. Why are you bucking so hard for one? Look, Captain. The way things have been going in the division. When a man goes in his pocket for no reason, I come a little unglued. I don't want to be the next cop to get dusted. If you really got something to tell me, come on, would you? Let's have it. The man whose fingerprints we found on Tom Miguel's license plate is an ex-convict by the name of Leonard Gardner. He also happens to be a member, or was a member, of that Black December group. Well, we've got him under surveillance. Around the clock? Mm-hmm. You find him huddled someplace with a handful of conspirators, huh? No, so far he hasn't contacted anybody. Oh, so they've used two detectives on three shifts, six officers, to find out he lives a solitary life. Frank, six weeks ago, another ex-convict by the name of Fred Kelly was fished out of the river. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. He was a gun peddler. What's he got to do with this? I checked into it. Now, shortly before his death, Kelly unloaded a shipment of shotguns and automatic rifles somewhere. You really turned detective, haven't you? Before he died, Kelly called a certain telephone number at least twice a day for a week. That number belonged to that package wrapping outfit I was telling you about. Its owner is Leonard Gardner. Now, he's the fellow who sent me Miguel's license plate. Now, come on, Frank. We still need those 36 men. Have you thought through the impact on the community of more policemen on the streets? In my opinion, the community would welcome it. They'd get a feeling that their streets were secure. And in my opinion, the community could only think damn right there's a conspiracy of police officers against citizens. By your own admission, you've got jumpy troops on your hands and a hostile community. That's right. Well, I'm not going to add to your problems or the communities by giving you more men. But... I am going to help you right now by telling you no more investigating on your own. This case was downtown homicides from the beginning. They've been on it. They're still on it. They'll break it. And that's your help, huh? I think it is. Okay. But I still say there's a conspiracy down there in those streets. And so now downtown homicide is going to tell my men, listen, boys, we're going to be checking into this for you. So just go ahead right on down there. And if you get shot at, sorry. For no other reason than you got a blue uniform on, huh? And that's the kind of help I can expect from an old friend. Steve, you're too close to the problem. You still are. I simply want to solve the murder of two policemen. And I think homicide can do just that. They're equipped. They've got lots of sources of information. Plus, they've got a couple of real hot dogs on the staff. So that part of it's totally out of your hands. You can now go back uptown and start being... A full-time captain again. Hey, come on, tell me. <laughs> How do I look in the old Bevan Tucker, huh? Evans and that Zoom of his. What time was it yesterday when that surveillance team got a hold of him? Three in the afternoon. Did you ever see the flicks he took of the Grand Canyon? Uh-uh. Don't. He goes in and out with that Zoom so much it made my wife nauseous. Now you zoom, Evans, zoom! Hold it. Our oh. little duty clerk. And Leonard Garner. Well, what do you know? What'd you do that for? Let him go inside. How much more time have they got? Man's friend of man, huh? That's me. Who do you want to talk to at headquarters, Captain? Nobody. Gardner and little Marie spent the three hours in that room, Steve. Don't you think headquarters ought to know about it? We're off of it. I said forget about it. What does that mean? It means I want Marie Hall and Leonard Gardner kept under strict surveillance. Okay. 
You gonna stay on it? If it's okay with you. I take my orders from you. What you tell me to do, I have to do. Well, don't worry about it. There's only gonna be one head on that block, and that's mine. Okay? It's your head, Captain. Yeah. Miss Johnson's on the phone, Captain. Hello. You want your apology over the phone? No. There is a conspiracy. The men who killed those two officers are planning to kill more. How do you know? I know. You sent me on an errand, remember? Who are they? Ten men, twelve, who knows? Men who, even though they don't know it, are trying to tell you what time it was. What time it was? In any movement. Most of the people know when the goals change. Objectives become broader, deeper. But a movement takes time. It goes too fast for most. And too slow for others. These are the ones you're up against. Though all they can respond to is the fact that you wear the guns and are keeping things the way they are. Now they have the guns and they want to change things. I'm not defending them. I've never agreed with them. But I can understand them. And I can feel for them. I don't feel a thing. They're murderers, cop killers. Yes. Well, I'm sorry I can't supply you with their names. They were never given to me. You could give me the one name. I don't understand. I think you do. The name they call themselves. I don't know it. Well, the name they once had. Most, if not all, of them are breakaways from the Black December movement. There's a young white woman that seems to be committed to them. Marie Hall? How'd you know that? Well, I'll guess. She was very useful in helping them get guns. I don't know how. I think I can figure that out. You did great. Can you stop it? With what you've given me, I think so. Listen. The next time you call on me, make plans. And come and get me in a taxi, honey, because I'm not going to ride in a car that's got brackets for a shotgun. I want you to do that, Steven. Now you'd better go. You got your job. Oh. Hi, Captain. Hi, Marie. I did like the night work. Oh, terrific. How do you spend your afternoons? Well, my way, Captain. With Leonard? Leonard Gardner? I know is... Okay, Marie. Okay. Now, um, what's the name of that black group you mixed up with? What group? The one Leonard belongs to. I don't know anything about a group. I just met him yesterday. He says that you were a dedicated instrument of the conspiracy. You purchased them arms from a dealer now dead who would have been hinky about selling arms to Gardner. You see, your boyfriend had a reputation for ripping off dealers with the very guns he bought from them. Now, Gardner says that Kelly would have sold you a battleship. That's not true. How many times have you been at the Paradise Motel with him? He wouldn't have told you that. Well, how else would we know, Marie? We know everything about you. Everything. Hey, man. How many colors does a picture on the wall have to have before you know it's there? Huh? No, no! You're getting me mixed up. You're trying to get me mixed up. Mix up, we're trying to straighten you out. Okay, so there were prints on the license plate, but we needed a name to check them against. Now we know where you got the weapons from that you use to kill the police officers, and we also know the dealer's name who sold them. Not to me. What difference does it make now, huh? What difference does it make? All right. So Marie made the first initial contact. But after that, when the ball was rolling, he contacted you twice a day. You really think that you went to the Paradise Motel with Marie alone the other day? And you think we don't know every word spoken in room 206? Huh? Huh? I trusted her. When did she start working for you? I'll get you the exact date if you really want to know it. Now, Marie initiated a contact with the gun dealer, didn't she? Didn't she? She did. They set the price. She made the down payment. Where was the delivery made? 1600 block, Dalvert District. She made the final payment also, didn't she? Huh? Huh? Yeah. 
And she knew that the guns would be used to kill police officers now, didn't she? Didn't she? Yeah, you're damn right! Thank you. But he doesn't seem to mind you doing a hundred years, does he? I was one of them. Maybe. That's only a side issue. What do you want, Captain? Where are they? What are their names? Frankie. Yeah. We know where they are. We're going in after them. I hear you. No, they're got off their names. Duty, Sergeant. But get them in here. We're just going after the men we yeah. know are guilty. Yeah. Okay. You keep the lid on wherever you can. Stephen, be careful, okay? How else would I order a taxi? Neighborhood cleared, traffic perimeter established. But wait those hot shots down at headquarters here about this year, but will be in a sling. I won't even mention the chief. I'm sure he's heard. What about that building behind us? Could be in the direct line of fire. That's an office building. Nobody's in yet. This is Captain Covino. You men in there. You know that we have you surrounded. There's no possible way out for you. You know that. I don't want any bloodshed. I want to avoid it at all costs. I'm going to give you one minute. Come out with your hands up, or we're going to force you out. One minute. You know what the plan is? Got it. You know when to make the move if you have to. Got two men in the back up. They'll be pointed in. 30 seconds. Now, nobody has to get hurt. I want you to come out with your hands up, and not a shot will be fired. Congratulate himself, but I... Frank, he proved it was a conspiracy, didn't he? Yes, sir. He did prove it was a conspiracy, but... Do you have positive proof there was a conspiracy, Captain? Is it true, Captain, you went into that warehouse on your own? No comment. I happen to know he disobeyed a direct order from me. Oh. Plus, when he collected his evidence, I got nothing from him. He went into that warehouse on his own like a gung-ho Marine. Where's Captain Calvino now? He's due here right now, sir. I sent for him. Bring him to me. All right, sir. You can see his spell. Be there in minutes. No comment, fellas. The word's all over the division, Captain. You violated a direct order when you went in. Is that true? No comment. 
Steve. Is it true, Captain, that a member of your own staff... Chief Modere! Chief Modere! Captain, Captain. 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 you owe us a statement. 12 roger. 12 Roger. 13 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 roger.